Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 236 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, March the 27th, tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful night. It's my first time on air. It was a great day here in Barrie. Mm -hmm. Sunny skies. And uh, we are excited to welcome Erica Lalonde uh, into the studio for the first time tonight. You were saying yeah. that uh, this is your first time actually live. Yes, on it a is broadcast. my first time live on a broadcast. I've always been a behind the scenes type of person, so yeah. it's nice to actually be on air. Cool. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I want to hear the skinny on, uh, on what it is that you do and, and uh, how you found yourself here. Good to see you uh, joining us uh, in the chat room from all over the world. Uh, I want to let you know tonight is a very special night. I'm very, very excited about it and a lot has been leading up to this because we are taking you on the first ever tour of the Category 5 TV studio. In addition to that, I'm going to be showing you how uh, the software that we use works. That's Telestream Wirecast. And uh, at the end of the show, we're also going to be giving away or, or announcing the contest, telling you how you can get a free copy of Telestream Wirecast, so make sure you stick around. So uh, you are, well, I mean, we, your, your bio's on the website, so yeah. very cool. Go to our website, category5.tv, and you'll be able to find out more about Erica, but uh, how did you get involved in broadcasting, and what brings you to, uh, to Category 5? Well, you know, I started off doing some random videos for school projects, and mm -hmm. my dad noticed that, you know, they were kind of pretty good for school videos and then he just kind of started um, asking me to actually create some internet commercials for oh, his cool. company and um, I started off with a paintball video for Liquid Image. I saw that, yeah. And um, it was a lot of fun, you know, shooting. I got to shoot my dad, got to shoot some yes. people. Like, <laughs> you know, I got a, I love paintball. <laughs> and um, it was a lot of fun, got to shoot it. Then I got to just, you know, spend hours and hours editing it. And then, you know, getting to actually see it play on the internet, yep. it's great. Cool. And then after that, I um, did another commercial. I did the ski commercial. We shot it and then also I was you know kind of doing some little tricks for everyone yeah. and um, then we brought it here and then from there that's how we kind of met up very cool uh, and I know that the question is going to come up people in the chat room and people uh, in the category 5 community are going to wonder about uh, they always say like how did you how did you find out about the show or how did uh, you get involved Erica was actually the uh, the lady who was on the skis in the uh, the latest snow uh, camera mask commercial that was here on Category 5. So, um, and you've been following the show for some time as well, I presume. Yes, I've been following it for for myself. I'm really interested in learning about Linux because for, I'm... Yes. Finally, we got one, folks. I'm, I'm a PC yes. user and for myself, I, I would love to learn something new. <laughs> yeah? Do you have like a laptop or something that we can... Uh, yeah, I'll have to bring my laptop the next time and like maybe we can just like switch it over and just Next not time. When Erica's yes. here, we will be installing Ubuntu 12.04. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, you know, I don't really, don't tell my dad, it'll be okay. Is he a Windows guy? Oh, forever. Yeah. Ever since we've had a computer, since I was four, it's been, yeah, PC. I'm all sorry. The way. I'm sorry. <laughs> Linux is, is a lot of fun to use. It's 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 a pleasure to use, really. And I think you've seen on the show, uh, from uh, from the viewer perspective, that it is uh, a very viable alternative to Windows or Mac. So, uh, and I'm just thrilled to use it myself. Great to see people in the chat room. I saw an yeah. email that came in uh, from CyberSmurf just welcoming you. I'll get you to bring that up on the screen there we are. well from cyber Smurf, it says well welcome erica skiing paintballing nerding out with computer <laughs> tech three for three on list of my favorites looking forward to seeing erica on the category five team well thank you cyber smurf you know when i'm not doing anything active i'm usually found in my basement hooked up to xbox live and 
Well, I guess I call it pony noobs, but that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be one of them. Yeah. Um, Erica, uh, uh, her bio is on the website, as I said. Go to category5.tv and you'll mm-hmm. see it there uh, under About Us and uh, the Category 5 TV team. Yeah, it's so good to see everybody joining us in the chat room. Garby is uh, is here. Jot, who has been away for a, f- a couple weeks, having... Uh, Locked himself into uh, a video, a particular video game. Good to see you. Nice to see everybody. Tally B C Y G. I have no idea how to say it, but welcome. We've got a couple of guests joining us in the chat room as well. Nice to see you. And those who are here from the Telestream Wirecast forum, it's nice to have you here. I've been chatting with some of you uh, online, and uh, and it's a pleasure to have you here joining us for a live show. And uh, if you're watching this pre-recorded after the fact as well, it's nice to see you. So stick mm-hmm. around. We're going to be learning a whole bunch of stuff. So we are uh, really crammed for time tonight because we've got this really yeah. exciting feature coming up in the tour of the studio. I'll just make a mention that if you have a mobile device, we have this mobile website. You can scan that code. It's m.cat5.tv. That's going to take you to a very special mobile version of our website. And uh, you can check that out on your mobile device. should work with all of the above. Well, I'm getting a lot of notes from the text line that I don't use the computer games. Yes, I do play a lot of computer games. I, I'm mostly in the creative computer games. I like to build cities, like Sim Cities, Age of Empires. Sweet. You know, I'm more about that. <laughs> Seems so old school, doesn't it? I know. How can you be old school? Uh, Seriously. It's just, I'm a very old school type of person. I still got a record player. I still have everything. Like, you know, I still bring my CD player around. I like my CDs. Yeah. It's, One it's of my cool. old friends was on Facebook <laughs> and said that they were going to sell their LP collection. No. And I went in there and I went, no. <laughs> no. And he's like, but it's taking up so much room. And this is a guy, an old mm. radio jock, right? So he has tons and tons of LPs just lining his basement. Well, I would and love I said, to buy them. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the thing with these LPs is it's like that is a big part of your history. And if you still have that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. that's the kind of gear that if you, if you get rid of it, you will always regret that. Mm-hmm. At least keep, you know, the, the core of those things. There's some things that just don't belong in storage and don't belong um you know you shouldn't be giving away or selling that's one of those things so i hear you about the lps yeah i don't know i'm the type of person i'll go to a garage sale and try to find them and that's what i've been doing lately i don't have an lp player but i i'm watching for like band on the run and mm-hmm. you know the classics and stuff that i listened to as a kid mm-hmm. and if i could get those on on record then I would I would be getting a record player for sure. There's just something about it. It's just the sound quality for myself. I just like listening yeah. to a record and you Can't know. Can't be reproduced. Otis Redding on CD <laughs> imported from LP. It's just not the same. The well, scratches aren't genuine. That's true. I just kind of feel a little bit different. Like you know, I'll be on my computer gaming, and all of a sudden I have like all this like technology hooked up, like wireless, and then I have yep. like my LP playing in the background <laughs> with the speakers that are taller than me. <laughs> yeah. People in the chat room are like, "Are you nervous?" Not really. Not I'm having sense. a great time. Like I'm, I'm just starting up. Yeah, you know, I'm having a great time. Not really that nervous. Mm-hmm. I I like I like doing TV stuff. It's fun. Cool. <laughs> Well, it's nice to have you here. Um, mm-hmm. We uh, we always have a call for postcards, and we love to receive oh, yes. your postcards. Well, this show. postcard's actually from Afghanistan, and um, it says, Hello, Robbie and Cass. This is Specialist Philip Giero uh, um, and the soldiers from the 236 Engineer Company, and we wish to thank you for your hard work and dedication. We especially enjoy the photo manipulation series, and we're also using the game. Also, thanks for the MP4 RSS tip. And cool. at the bottom, I have no clue what this says. Like, I don't know if anyone can somehow well, look at stamped, this. They've stamped they, over yes, top of the words. they stamped over eh? top. And, you know, I would love to read that last little blur, but I don't know. Maybe, Specialist, if you could uh, email us what, yes. what that last line says. We could try to make that out. This is what happens, <laughs> folks. If you send in a postcard, keep in mind that the uh, the, posted, the post office or whatever, they stamp this thing down here. So we always lose what is at the bottom. It looks like, to me, this is what I, and I'm picturing a Specialist saying this, a big hooyah from Afghanistan. Is it, or is it, 
hooray or something. I'm thinking hoo ya. Hoo ya. All right. There yeah, I would say so. Very cool stuff. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, for, uh, specialist, for sending that in. Means a lot to us here at the show to receive that from you, and awesome that uh, that you guys are uh, are enjoying the show, mm-hmm. and uh, and we love having you here. And uh, certainly, you know, I, I would love to receive. I mean, we'll just take it one step further, specialist. If if we could get a photo of you and and your crew watching the show or using open yeah. source software or something. Send it our way. Digitally is fine. You don't need to try to get it through customs. And uh, and that would just be awesome. It would be great seeing, like, the crew getting their, like, I guess their technology on or something. Getting their GIMP on. <laughs> GNU Image Manipulation Program. What an awesome piece of software. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that uh, we were able to introduce some of you to it. Uh, this is Category 5 Technology TV, and uh, lots going on tonight. Stick around. We are going to be uh, we're going to be taking you for a tour of the studio here. We've got your viewer questions as well. Don't go yes. anywhere. Uh, lots coming up after this. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome back. You'll find us online at www.category5.tv. And Category 5 is also a member of the Tech Podcast Network for techpodcast.com. And here's a viewer question. Um, we have, so here's a question for the Category 5 guru. It is, it, is it possible to use a USB adapter on an iPad 1 and get a webcam and use it to Skype? Oh, wouldn't that be awesome if you could? The first gen <sighs> iPad is the one that didn't yeah. have the camera, right? Mm-hmm. Planned obsolescence, folks. Apple is brilliant at it. They bring out a device that's super cool, but they leave out the camera. Mm-hmm. So then they bring out the second gen. Ooh, it's got a camera. And then they bring out the third gen, and it's, oh, it's faster. It's got a better screen and a better camera. And it's just, it's like strategically growing their product. And unfortunately, the, the USB adapter that you can use for uh, importing your camera photos and things like that it cannot be used for a webcam it would be nice and it does work with some devices usually headsets or um, microphones usb microphones and things like that it can work for that so you can use skype for audio but you can't do video so kind of a problem there there are some attempts out there Uh, i'll bring on to one uh, here jamie cat5.tv slash cam a it looks like camera and that'll take you to a website that introduces you to camera A, camera B. And what that software does is it basically lets you use your iPhone as a camera on your iPad. That's about as close as you can really get. Wow. Basically streaming the iPhone 4 camera through Wi-Fi to your iPad. It doesn't work with Skype, but it lets you do things like put your iPhone in somewhere that's hard to get to. Mm-hmm. And you can actually see it on a bigger screen with the iPad. But kind of useless because then why wouldn't you just use your iPhone? Yeah. Realistically. Uh, Only other option that I can think of for you is to maybe go over to B&H Photo Video, cat5.tv slash bh. And when you're there, you could could get an iPad first-gen camera, something like the the Sakaar cameras for iPad, but this will be funny. You're going to love this. (laughs) How do you like those? All right. I definitely like the Minnie Mouse. Minnie Mouse? Okay, I'm thinking Minnie Mouse then. There we go. So check this out. It's a bit of a camera. It's 60 bucks, <laughs> right? But it's compatible with the first-gen iPad. Yeah. I mean, it's really your only option if that's the route that you're going to go. A lot. Of, this is the way that they planned it, right? It's to try to get you to upgrade. And it's frustrating, for, I think, for hardware vendors as well because, you know, you, you build something to their current spec and then they change the spec. So, but oh. those those products uh, from Sakar are still available, uh, and they're compatible for sixty bucks with the iPad, and they look awesome. Yeah, the kids, would, the kids dig them. Yeah, I would definitely have one of those yeah. on my iPad. You got to get the skin to match, though, like the yeah, you know, have a mini mouse iPad. <laughs> there you go. 
the more you know. <laughs> well, we have a question from Eric's tweets. And this question... Oh, yeah, this one from last week? Yeah, and now it can finally be answered. So last week I saw Eric's tweet, and I wanted to see him perform at Doc Marone's on Saturday. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to drive that last 4,459 kilometers in the time for the show. I'm sure Eric's performance was great, nonetheless. So I was wondering if there was somewhere on the web where I can enjoy some of Eric's music. And this is from Cybersmurf. All right, Cybersmurf. Now, we, we took this question last week, and I didn't really know, but I did some searching after the fact, right? And I found it. Cat5.tv slash doc for Doc Malone's DOC. It's going to take you to our Ustream channel where, as I said last week, I, I actually was there, and I streamed it live from my camera, from my iPod Touch. So it's, it's terrible quality is as far as the quality goes and there's a commercial off the bat but you'll see that there are a couple of yeah, there's more eric more eric eric live etc so you'll get to see him play live quality is lousy as far as the video it's just me with this on a salt shaker <laughs> but at least there's something for you all right cat5.tv slash doc and there you have it thank you for the question yeah There, are there any other questions? Or? Um, yes, we have a question. We have from also Cyber Smurf. Oh. So you showed biggest <laughs> fan this week. I know. Cyber Smurf comments. <laughs> Cyber Smurf questions. So you showed the Category Five info on the TVDB.com website in episode 227. Some of the season one episodes had topics that I'm interested in. I could not find any. Season Oh, man, that's a long time ago. I could not find any access to the episodes themselves on TV, DB Dub, or, cat or Category 5. But I thought that Eric mentioned on air that the episodes archived on its site. Although he did not give the URL, what, uh, would you have the URL for that site from Cybersmith? <laughs> <laughs> you know that trash bin, right? And the way that you empty it, that's, that's pretty much... Season one, I mean, we're in the midst of season five here. So season one was like when we were first getting going, Wirecast didn't have, you know, I don't even know mm. if it existed back then. Uh, our camera was like uh, a 320 by 240 webcam, something Ooh. like that, which we still have, by the way. It's a collector's item. <laughs> season one, here's what I'll do. Go to cat5.tv slash archive. And this is less than ideal because these videos strictly do not exist right now on the web. But this is going to automatically throw you over to the very, very old video player. You'll see that there are three zeros there. Make sure that there are always three digits and start with one, two, three. So 004 is actually going to launch for you episode four. That's the fourth episode of Category 5. Like, we're talking early 2007. <laughs> Completely different, layout. Completely different. What do you think of the quality <laughs> difference, folks? I mean, really. So you enjoy that because everything's just so current. I mean, the stuff that I demo doesn't even exist anymore. Do you want to learn about the barrel project? I do. Well, good luck finding it. There you go. All right. Well... I suppose that's really all the time that we have for viewer questions, if you can believe it yeah. tonight. And we're foregoing the news because I want to take you for a tour of the studio here. So uh, make sure you check out our website, category5.tv. Uh, before we skip over, I'm not forgetting anything, am I? Uh, I'm pretty sure we're all good for tonight. Right. I think yeah. everyone's kind of excited to see how everything works here. I know I was when I first entered here, and I still am learning new things. So. Yeah. It's cool. awesome. Well, the uh, feature is pre-recorded. We're we're in the chat room. We're going to have a short question and answer after the uh, after the feature. Um, so stick around after that, and don't forget. And we'll mention this in the chat room as well. We have a free copy of Telestream Wirecast to give away, and that's going to be uh, announced just after this feature. So don't go anywhere. Enjoy. Welcome to the Category 5 Technology TV Studio. Today, we're not just taking you on a tour, kind of like an exclusive behind the scenes uh, to show you how we do things here at Category 5 TV, but we're also going to be showing you how you can do a similar setup using Telestream Wirecast, which is software available for both the PC and Mac computers. So uh, stick around. First of all, we're going to start things off with a quick tour of the studio. 
working our way down into the Category 5 studio, you'll see Major Tom, our space fish. Some people have asked uh, where he's been these days, and that's where you'll find him. Telestream Wirecast up on my screen controls all of our cameras, and you'll see that I've got a Microsoft LifeCam studio in front of me and two there. And uh, also the demo computer screen is captured using uh, their software, uh, Desktop Presenter. And there is the co-host screen on the left, and that allows Hillary and other co-hosts to follow the chat room and also read email, of course. Ready? Ready to roll, right. ready to rock. There's our cat, Winston, who sometimes hangs out at our feet. And, of course, Backstage Pass, the camera that allows you to watch behind the scenes as things are taking place. What self-respecting geek studio would be complete without a serious collection of Star Trek novels? <laughs> and, of course, our main broadcast system. This is where all the cameras plug into. And it is an Intel Core i7-2600K running inside the Thermaltake Level 10 Snow Edition chassis, and as I said, using Telestream Wirecast on the Windows platform. This is kind of what it looks like from the studio, as far as when someone is standing in the studio and seeing the show taking place live. They can see everything up on that screen there, and that can sometimes be used by the camera person, as it is in this case, but also you'll notice that all of our cameras are stationary, and yet we're able to move them around. Here's the chat room. Somebody's watching the chat room on their cell phone while watching the show live from the studio. And as I'm saying, uh, you'll see that the cameras are all stationary, but yet we can change the angles. So we're going to show you how to do that in just a few minutes using Telestream Wirecast. Very cool stuff. There's our feet, where Mr. Winston sometimes hangs out. And again, kind of the wide shot. And you'll see all these poles sticking up from the ground. We've got lighting rigs and all that kind of stuff. The zoom on the screen there is provided by Compiz, which is a part of Linux on our demo system. And that demo system is the black one there in the frame, uh, also in a Thermaltake chassis, the Zazer 6. So let's take a look at how all this comes together and makes Category 5 Technology TV possible. One of the questions I get most often about Category 5 and how we do things here is how we're able to get the sound so good during a live broadcast. And a big part of that is our Behringer 1002B console. And this can be done with any kind of console, but of course, uh, this is nice and portable and does a great job. It's got phantom powered, and you'll see that we're plugged in directly to XLR. This XLR cable goes out to an adapter, which plugs into my headset microphone directly. We're not using any wireless microphones. Uh, we've done that in the past and had some interference, and that's not a good situation. So from this board, you'll see that we've actually got, uh, we've got the uh, quarter inch to XLR outputs, and those XLRs go to, uh, an ad well, they actually go into the back of a BBE Sonic Maximizer. The Maximizer is a signal processor, which uh, basically cleans up the signal, makes it sound real nice. And then, of course, it goes straight into an Ultramizer Pro from Behringer, and this is a compressor. It's an audio compressor, so that if I speak loudly, watch this, da, 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 da. The red is actually basically turning down my volume, so it will never clip, and it just keeps things nice and level, keeps things sounding great, and if I get loud, it doesn't matter. It's not going to pop your speakers on the other end. So that's a very, very important component of our audio setup. From the Sonic Maximizer, our compressor, it goes straight out into the back of the computer. You'll see here, going into the blue, we actually have a cable that is coming directly off of the back of that. Uh, device itself off the back of the compressor. And here, while I've got you here, I'll show you our cameras are in fact going into USB 3 cards. I've got them staggered and I've only got one camera going into each card. These are USB 3 cards uh, because they are going to give us the best throughput uh, on, any, uh, on, on any camera. The reason that they're on uh, individual channels, the reason that we have one card per camera is to make sure that we don't max out the, uh, the bus on the computer itself. Cooling is a big deal to us, so we have the Thermaltake Frio cooling our CPU. And down from there, you see the, uh, the USB 3 cards there. And one of the things that you'll notice is the cable management on the Thermaltake Level 10 is extremely clean. This is also a big thing, uh, a big part of our cooling system, uh, having the fact that most of the cables are well hidden behind the, uh, the main board there. Uh, the fact is, just plain and simple, the airflow is good. And so we get a very, very cool Core i7. Next up is our demo system in a Thermaltake Zazer 6. Another awesome chassis from them. Die hard with liquid cooling and uh, retractable sealing to change your liquid cooling. 
And of course, just a fairly basic system, which is the system that I bring up on the air right here whenever uh, we want to show demos of Linux. Next up is our lighting, and you'll see that we have proper studio lighting here at Category 5 TV, and it's very important when you're broadcasting live that you do have proper lighting. You're not going to be able to do correction uh, after the fact like you can with pre-recorded and things like that. Uh, proper lighting in the studio is extremely important, especially when using digital imaging devices such as digital video cameras, webcams, etc., because the lighting plays a big part in your actual frame rate. Our cameras for ultimate maneuverability are actually mounted on microphone booms and we have these adapters that convert them over to uh, standard camera mounts. This is the Microsoft LifeCam Studio 1080p webcam and of course it's able to capture in full 1080p and does a fairly nice job as well. And having it on this boom allows us to have ultimate flexibility as far as making sure that we're able to look like we're looking at a camera even though we're in fact looking at a computer screen. I think if you want to start an online broadcast, here are three things that you absolutely critically must have. First thing, you've got to be able to take the cameras and bring them into some form of a system that's going to allow you to switch between the cameras, between video clips and uh, even images and text. You need to be able to seamlessly transition between those. And the reason for that is because when you're live, you don't have the opportunity to do post-production, to be able to edit those things in after the fact because people are watching live. Second thing, of course, as a live show on the internet, you have to be able to source that to a service provider such as Ustream.tv or Justin.tv. You've got to be able to use your internet connection to send that feed out over the internet and then let it be rebroadcast to your viewers from there. Third thing, and this is something that I learned the hard way when we first started the show uh, back in 2007, is that you have to be able to record to disk. I say that I learned the hard way because what happened in our case is, you'll remember up until episode 11, we were actually streaming to Ustream.tv and using that as our recorded video. So we'd hit record as we were streaming it to the server. So if, for example, my internet connection would go down, all of a sudden I've got these pieces of files saved on the Ustream server and I'd have to download them, splice them together, re-encode and upload them. And that could be a bit of a nightmare. But here's the other thing. When you're streaming to a server online, you're limited based on your internet connection. So in my case, it was about four to 600K that I was able to, uh, to upload as far as my upstream goes. So if you can imagine, if I was recording just from that file, now I've got a file that's say 600K, 600 kilobits per second, I mean. So in that case, that's really generally, I mean, that's low quality. It's good for live streaming, but it's not very good for on-demand viewing uh, and being able to watch it full screen on a TV, for example, from an RSS feed uh, on a set-top box or uh, maybe Miro Internet TV. So that's why you absolutely need to have the ability, this is my third point, to record directly to disk. Because then you can go 2,000 kilobits per second. You can go 3,000 kilobits per second if you're moving around a whole lot and you need that kind of frame, uh, that kind of bit rate. Um, so that is essential. What's very, very cool is that Telestream Wirecast is not only able to do these three things, but it's able to do them very, very well. I'm going to show you tonight as we're using a Microsoft LifeCam Studio. In fact, we have three of them here set up for the demonstration. I'm going to show you how to set these up in Telestream Wirecast, and we're going to look at some of the more advanced features as well. Uh, this is by no means a, a de facto tutorial on how to use Wirecast, but it's something to get you started and to show you that these things are possible with this amazing software. All right, so this is what Telestream Wirecast basically looks like out of the box. First thing I want to do is turn on my layout and master audio so that I can see levels as they come in. Also, layout and output statistics helps me to see my frames per second, CPU usage, and things like that, my data rate. Next up, I want to add my first camera. So I'll click on the camera icon down here, and you'll see that I've already named my cameras uh, uniquely. So Robbie Shot, Main Shot, and Co-Host Shot. I'm going to add the Robbie Shot. What's really, really cool about that is that 
Telestream Wirecast, even though I have three Microsoft LifeCam Studio cameras, it identifies each one individually so that I can rename uh, and actually give it something that's a little friendlier, like this one I call the Robbie Cam, because it's my camera. So there we go. So you'll see that I am in a four over three uh, mode right now. So first thing I want to do is go sources, show source settings, click on the Robbie cam, and you'll see that out of the box it's giving me 320 by 240. So let's change it right up to 1080p. There it goes. Okay, so now I've got a 1080p source, still within a four over three or three over two window. So what I need to do is change my canvas size. And in Telestream Wirecast, click on File, Canvas Size, and pick one of these 16 over 9 options for a 16 over 9 camera. I'm going to go with 1080p because, of course, this is a 1080p camera. So now that I've got my 1080p source running on a 1080p canvas, what do I want to know? I want to know if I can add more than one camera. So back at Telestream Wirecast, again, let's add another shot, our main shot. There's another camera here, and you'll see that I'm getting cut off because it is also in 4 over 3 mode. So go to Sources and Show, sh show <laughs> Source Settings. Go into Main, and there you go. Main, of course, is just the name of the camera, as I named it. You can name your cameras, like I have, nice and unique, by right-clicking on them here and going Rename Source. Close out of that, and now I've got two 16 over 9 1080p true camera cam uh, cameras coming into Telestream Wirecast. Okay, next camera, co-host shot. There it is. Let's change the settings. 1080p, and now it's there. Okay, I'm going to switch to cut mode here. Of course, we've got things like bowstring. How cool is that? Right? On the fly CGI, and then of course just straight cuts as well. Live cameras, of course. So we can see that we can actually run multiple cameras in 1080p mode here in Telestream Wirecast on this system. So that's a great thing. But let's say we don't need 1080p. We're doing a web broadcast. So do we really need to be in full 1920 by 1080 p Chances are pretty good that 720p may do nicely for what you're going to do. In fact, it works very well for uh, us here at Category 5 TV. The advantage to using 720p over 1080p is clear you're able to use lossless digital zoom. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to remove these sources, and I'm going to change my canvas to 720p. Now there's my camera. You'll see that it looks exactly as it did. However, my canvas size is 720p. So what that means is anything that I do in Telestream Wirecast, if I'm saving to disk, is going to be a canvas size of 720p. You'll remember from Photoshop or using GNU Image Manipulation Program, if you take a photo that is this big and make it this big, it's going to lose quality. However, if you take a photo that's this big and you make it this big, it's going to stay the same as far as quality goes. You're not going to lose anything because you're going down, not up. That's what we can do here. We have a 1080p source. We can take it down to 720p, and we can do some really cool things. Using the analogy of the uh, image in your image editor, think about something that's this big, and instead of resizing it, think about cropping it, creating a canvas that's this big, and being able to move it around that bigger image. So you're still not losing any quality. It's still this big as far as the image is concerned, but you're able to move around and look like you're zooming in on that image. Check this out. So now I have, if I go to Sources, Source Settings, go to the Robbie camera, you'll see I have a source that is 1080p. So that's a full 1080. And I have a canvas that is only 720p. So now let's take our camera. I'm going to take this off of the tripod here. And I'm going to put it on this little thing here. And I'm going to put it right in front of my computer monitor. And with this graphic up on the screen, we can see that the green is 1080p and the red is 720p. So let's fit the outer edges, so the left and right edge of the green, into my frame so that it's just touching the edge of my camera frame. Remember that the camera is capturing a 1080p. There we go. Okay. I need to also make sure that I can see the red. Okay. I don't need to fill the entire frame. Now I'm going to bring up the shot editor, and I'm going to hold in my Alt key in Telestream Wirecast and pull back. That's going to zoom in, move it around a little bit, and I want to get that red portion and do the exact same kind of thing. I want it to touch the edges of my frame without going over, because that's lossless. 
So what I'm basically doing is I'm zooming in digitally on a 1080p source all the way to 720p. That's about as close as I can go. So now, if I click here, that is now my frame. I'm going to move it back up into the frame there. There we go. So let's put this back on the tripod and see how this affects us. So now you see that the camera is actually very, very close to me. So here's what's really cool. You can see that, for example, my chin is kind of a little bit too low. There's too much room up here above my head. So I'm going to bring up that shot, and I can, in fact, move that shot around the screen losslessly. That means I'm not losing any quality, and I can do that. So now if I duplicate that shot, I've got two of them now. I'm going to rename this one Main Camera. And the reason that I duplicated that is because now I have one that's already zoomed in at 720p from a 1080p source. I'm going to select my main camera. There it is. And you'll see that now with my main camera zoomed in like that, I can move like that or I can move like that. So let's start with me. There's me. Okay, duplicate it again. Bring up that shot and move it over to my co-host chair. So if I click to enable smooth transitions on my shots here, uh, then you'll see that what I can do is take the shot from me, click on the next one, and it automatically pans over to the uh, person who's sitting next to me. It's perfect. It's a great economical way to be able to use, for example, just one HD webcam, which costs about $50 to $60. If you go to our website, cat5.tv slash cam, you'll see it there. And then you're able to move around that scene uh, losslessly and be able to make it look like you've got either multiple cameras in the case where you use the cut or you can use smooth transition and it will actually pan as if there's somebody operating your camera for you. To help you set up your lossless digital zoom, I'm going to put that up on the screen now. Feel free to pause the video so that you can get your camera all set up. So if your system's not performing quite as well as what you're seeing here, I'm going to give you a couple of tips. First of all, remember that 1080p is a lot for your system to process. It's got to be a pretty fast computer. You've got to have good uh, hard drive read and write. We have three hard drives in a RAID 0 for our reads and two hard drives in a RAID 0 for our writes. So anything that's happening is happening between those five hard drives and they're all RAID 0. Our data storage is done on a separate server, so we're not concerned about data loss if the drive crashes or anything like that. It would be devastating to the current broadcast, but would not uh, affect past broadcasts and things like that. So very important. But aside from performance, keep in mind, as I said before, you have to have each USB camera on its own separate USB card. Ours are PCI Express X1s. Um, and so I only plug in one camera to each card. It's very important that you're not sharing it with any other devices. You're not sharing that bus and you certainly are not plugging into your motherboard because guaranteed your motherboard is going to have other USB devices running off that bus that you may not even know about. For example, my computer has a card reader. Did you know that that's USB? If your laptop, if you're using a laptop, has a built-in webcam, that's actually USB. So you may think, well, I only have this one camera plugged into my USB bus. Well, really, no, if you're plugged into the motherboard or a laptop, you're actually using the USB bus that is uh, part of the, the whole grand scheme of things as far as the system is concerned. So in our case, we have three individual USB 3 cards. Very important. We went with USB 3 instead of USB 2, even though the cameras would function with USB 2, because USB 3 gives you that added bandwidth. So if it's going to come really close to maxing out a USB 2 card, it's going to come nowhere close to maxing out a USB 3 card at 5 gigabits a second versus USB 2, which is 480 megabits per second. So big difference there. You want to go with the USB 3 option. The cards for us were only $12 each, so it's really economical. It's really worth doing. So that said, if your system is unable to do what we're doing here today, there is another option for 1080p lossless zoom. I'm going to show you that now, and it is relying entirely and exclusively on Microsoft's drivers. So watch what we're going to do. I'm going to, in fact, go to my sources, show source settings, and I'm going to set my camera down to 720p. Now that may be the case. That may be what you need to do if your system is unable to process in Wirecast the full 1080p. Because remember, Wirecast is 
decoding the 1080p compressed signal from the camera. It's doing a whole lot of conversions. It's doing live CGI on top of that. It's doing transition effects. It's doing encoding to the hard drive. It's doing encoding to the stream. It's very heavy what this program has to do. But as I said, it does it really, really well. And as long as you understand the inner workings of how codecs work and how uh, the actual frame sizes affect your performance and things like that, and as long as you've got a fairly decent system that's able to handle what it is that you're trying to pump through it, you'll be able to do this. In my case, let's pretend that we don't have a good enough system so we can only do up to 720p, but oh, we really wish we could do that digital zoom losslessly. We can actually create a 720p lossless zoom using the Microsoft LifeCam drivers themselves. So what we'll do is we'll go back over to Telestream Wirecast and I'm going to go Sources, Show Source Settings and I'm going to change my camera to 720p. So there we have it. Now remember that I've already zoomed in on this so now this is going to be lossy because my source is actually 720p. So I'm going to remove that, delete Let's delete all those sources because they were designed for 1080p. Let's create a new shot for the Robbie shot. And there we go. So now we have a true 720p source going into a 720p canvas. So now what I can do is if you click down here, you'll see that you have three, in my case three, because I've got three Microsoft LifeCam cameras, three LifeCam dashboards. So I'm going to single click on the one that corresponds to my camera. You'll be able to determine which one that is by going into settings, properties of one of them, turn off autofocus, and adjust your focus. And if it works for that camera, you know that, hey, I'm on the right camera, obviously. So while we're looking at the focus, fix that. You don't want to use autofocus at any time when you're doing a live broadcast. Make sure you turn off white balance and exposure autom automation and uh, adjust those to a setting that's going to look really good for you and match it up with all of your cameras as well so that they all look the same as far as the colorization, the saturation, the contrast. So beyond that, now that we're using the Microsoft LifeCam drivers and the source is going in at 720p to Wirecast on the 720p canvas, I can use the zoom tool built into this driver. And that, of course, is also lossless. You can see that it doesn't give me quite as much control and of course if I brought up this I can't actually move it around on the canvas in Wirecast because remember Wirecast thinks it's a 720p camera at this point but of course the Microsoft drivers know otherwise so here I am zoomed in 720p losslessly on the 1080p camera and this is done strictly with the drivers what's nice about this for you is that this does not use the amount of resources of running in 1080p mode. So you're able to get that lossless zoom at 720, but you're actually running at 720p. So that way you're using a lot less resources. Things are running really smooth even on a slower system. Couple more things that I'd like to show you tonight with Telestream Wirecast. Let's bring up our camera source here and we're gonna add, first of all, a sound card. So I've clicked on the add button down here. That's added a, a media layer here and I'm gonna click to add my audio mixer. It would say line in or something like that. And I'm gonna click on it and now it's assigned line in to that particular uh, scene. It's on the layers. So now if I highlight that layer, you'll see that my levels on the right hand side here are moving around. They weren't before because I didn't have an audio capture device. So make sure that you create an audio device on all of your tracks that is that corresponds to what you want to be doing uh, with that audio track. So in our case, because it's coming off of the mixer, I've assigned my line in as the audio device for that. Let's create another layer here and we're going to go a text layer and let's just add something like that. Click on text and go Robbie Ferguson category, whoa, category 5.tv, something along those lines. So now if I click on that, now I've got a title as well. Really the only thing that we have left to do to really get into Telestream Wirecast is making sure that we can broadcast to the web, making sure that we can record to disk. So I'm going to show you that now, keeping in mind that there are obviously so many different things that you can do here, so many different ways that you can set up your cameras and your effects and the way that you want to transition between them. But I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to let you experiment and you can in fact download a free trial of Wirecast at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. Give it a try, see how it performs on your system, see if it's going to do really well for you, and then you can take the next step. Let's take a look at how we can set this up to broadcast. I'm going to go Broadcast, Broadcast Settings in Wirecast, and I'm going to add a new uh, stream here. 
And first of all, I'm going to choose an encoder preset. This is going to be for our broadcast. So if I have a really good internet connection, I might choose flash high bandwidth 16 over 9. Let's click on it. And we're going to click edit to see what that entails. You'll see that it is 960 by 540. 600 kilobits per second. So if you have a one megabit connection and you're not doing anything else online, you'll probably be able to withstand 600 kilobits per second. If you have way more than that, you might try HD bandwidth and look at that and you see that that is a thousand kilobits per second. So if you have say four megabits per second upload, you'll definitely have enough to, to handle that. Then you start to run into will your viewer be able to stream it down to them? Maybe it's going to be too much for them, in which case uh, you might want to bring it back a little bit. Of course, you're also able to create your own by going new and you'll see that we actually use our own custom uh, encoders here and you can go through and set everything up the way that you like. So in our case we're gonna go with the de facto flash high bandwidth 16 over 9. We're gonna choose justin.tv you can choose any of these options and we're gonna be able to stream just by entering our username there and then clicking on generate RTMP. So now we want to add the ability to record to disk, as I was saying earlier. So I'm going to click on Add a, a New Output here, highlight that, and we're going to go with Flash HD Bandwidth 16 over 9 and hit Edit. And you'll see here now I've got the defaults from Flash HD Bandwidth 16 over 9, but I want to go New, and I'm going to call this My Preset for uh, Present. How did I do that? Preset for Record to Disk. Okay, and hit OK. The reason that I wanted to do that is now I can manipulate these settings without messing up the original uh, Flash HD bandwidth uh, settings. So I'm going to change that to 2000 kilobits per second because I know that I'm actually recording this to disk. I know that my canvas is 720p, so that's what I'm going to set. Of course, if you were running in 1080p, you could set those to 1080p. Make sure you set to H.264 for your encoder, that's important. And of course, Everything else looks okay. You might increase the sound quality, 192 or whatever you want to do. And then hit save. Now, this is important. What we need to do now that we've created that is, again, click on our encoder preset. Notice that it's left it at flash HD bandwidth 16 over 9. I want to actually change that to my preset for record to disk. Now, choose our destination as record to disk. Tell it where you want to save it to. You can browse and change your type to MPEG-4. Now when I save that, I'm going to actually be able to record to disk by simply clicking on record. So now I'm recording, this is what it looks like at 720p, just as we've set it up right here right now. This is recording directly off of Wirecast during this demonstration. So now that we've accomplished all that, we can feel confident in using Telestream Wirecast. And Go back to here, click on our blank shot, and fade to black. So there you have it. That's essentially how we do things here at Category 5 Technology TV. I hope that you've learned lots. I hope that you had fun. And, of course, if you have any questions, just pop us an email live at Category5.tv. And I do encourage you, especially if you're considering setting up some kind of an online broadcast or if you're a church that wants to be able to broadcast your services, if you want to just be able to record and make it look really good and then broadcast it through RSS, having pre-recorded to disk, whatever it is that you're looking to do, if Telestream Wirecast looks like the thing for you, make sure you check them out, cat5.tv slash Wirecast. And again, if any questions are raised, make sure you pop us an email live at category5.tv. For Category 5 Technology TV, I'm Robbie Ferguson. And we are live at Category 5 TV, live at Category5TV.com is our email, and at 2545-CAT5TV for a phone, or 2545-522-8588. Thanks, everybody. I hope that uh, you enjoyed the feature and uh, learned a lot from that. Um, make sure you do get onto our website. It's Category5.TV, and uh, check us out. Uh, say hello, pop us the email, and... Uh, yeah, nice to see so many people uh, interacting in the chat room. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, JBSCC. Bull422. Nice to see you. Cheers, you, Al. All right. Uh, one of the things that I had talked about briefly that I didn't get to actually demonstrate for you was the BBE Sonic Maximizer. I thought I would show you what the difference is. So right now I've got BBE Sonic process going on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off now. So now you'll hear that there's a little bit less um, kind of, they call it, uh, sonic maximization and so if I turn it back on all of a sudden it just has that uh, a bit more of a brightness to the sound and that's just a simple device that uh, 
that does a really, really nice job in just kind of tweaking things. So, uh, just for those who are wondering, what does the Sonic Maximizer actually do? It's, it's easier to describe the, uh, the compressor than the Maximizer. The Maximizer, you've, you've really got to hear it, especially like if we're chatting or singing or doing whatever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Garby really summarized it well. It maximizes Sonic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, chat room. <laughs> so we've got a copy of Telestream Wirecast yes. to give away. Very, very excited about that. Uh, and uh, have a couple of moments to answer your questions in the chat room. Uh, I did see one question there, which is perfectly awesome. Uh, sorry, it, it, the chat room has been flying by. Mm -hmm. um, somebody had asked about Desktop Presenter uh, UL. Um, I, I didn't mention Desktop Presenter because we didn't get right into every little thing about Wirecast. And at the end of the feature there, I was just kind of saying, there's so much to it. Desktop Presenter is fantastic. In fact, you were a little in awe of this setup because at your studio, you have kind of everything is hardware-based, yep. not software. So in order to bring a computer screen up on the TV would be a challenge, I would assume. Yep. We have four actual computer screens, mm -hmm. and we have the old school mixer where you have so to hardware, uh, hardware cables, big thick cables, cables, teleprompter. We yeah. have five screens total. We have camera one screen, camera two screen. We have our commercial screen. We have um, just really, just really old HD cameras. <laughs> that, At least know, they're HD, eh? They're HD, but, but they're 720. It's still not 1080 yet. Yeah, and yeah. Well, that's, that's decent enough, but yeah. the the fact is is that this type of setup, there, there's so much less as far as big bulky cables go and, oh. and things like that. And one of the great things about Telestream Wirecast is this desktop presenter software. And it's in fact what allows us to bring the screen up on your screen. So if I ever want to show you a demo of what's happening on Linux, it's all done by this program. Or it could be Windows or it could be Mac. Uh, when we had a Mac in here, when uh, when Krista was doing a demo, we installed Desktop Presenter. Here, I've got it running on Linux, and of course, it's running under Wine. Really, really simple. So, it works fantastically, as you know, because you never even know that it's running. You probably didn't even give it any thought. But So, there are no cables going from one computer to the next for me to be able to capture that. It's literally a piece of software that's running on that Linux computer in the background, and uh, like I say, that could be a Windows computer too, it could be a Mac computer, it, you could have a hundred of them, and they could all be s basically video sources for your Wirecast. So all I do is I just click on it, and there's my screen, so I can bring you up a, a demo or whatever. So And it just does that through the, uh, through the Ethernet. It's crazy. I I walked in here and I was just like, this this studio takes up just a little corner of the room. <laughs> you got to see it tonight. It, it's a small <laughs> space, right? It's like we do a lot with a little. It's amazing. Yeah. When I when I first signed up, I thought you know it's gonna be a nice big studio, yeah, but green room. <laughs> somebody doing our yes. makeup and powdering our foreheads. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't happen, folks. You know nope. from the glare. Do it all on yeah. our own. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, the question here for myself is, for most podcasts, why would you need anything above 720? Well, for for my studio, it's very, very close, and you have the camera right in your face. And I find with 720, it's not the resolution that I kind of want um, for Wait, my your videos. Media, uh, your medium mm -hmm. is traditional television yes so a little bit different than i would think internet broadcasting yes and you know you have it right up close you're reading off the teleprompter and it's just kind of like for me 1080 looks a lot better when we get the chance to use the 1080 cameras mm. it's i find with the when i put it through our i wrote premiere program it kind of works better and also with the blemishes we have I've kind of figured out a way to set up the lighting quite well, and um, you know I can make a nice sort of stocking <laughs> over the lens, you know, whatever works. Piece you know, of white tissue. Yeah, it 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 works. Like it kind of <laughs> makes everyone look nice, and you know they're all high school kids, so they're all fine. Oh, okay, <laughs> perfect. So. We have a copy of Telestream Wirecast. Now you know what it is. Now you know how it works and mm -hmm. what you can do with it. And I definitely want to give this to somebody who is uh, 
basically going to be able to use it. So uh, it is a draw. The way that we're going to do this is strictly a draw. There is no favoritism whatsoever. But what I want you to do is I want you to give some thought to if you're going to participate in this contest and you don't have to, Jot, I would encourage you just to step aside. You've won enough, man. No, I'm <laughs> so kidding. But <laughs> give some thought as to what you would do with Telestream Wirecast. You'd probably revolutionize your studio. All of a sudden, you'd be stripping oh, cables out from the back yes, of your computers. Yes, I'm, I'm going to be having to talk to my professor. I need to talk to a lot of people <laughs> right now. <laughs> we need this software. <laughs> so I've got a copy of Telestream Wirecast. It's valued at about $450 US, and uh, I'd love to be able to award that to you. So as I'm saying, just give some thought. What would you do with this software? What uh, What is it that you would plan to do with Telestream Wirecast. And with that thought, just throw me a quick email and you're going to throw that over to contest at category5.tv. Those emails are going to be accumulated throughout the week. I want to be fair, so I know that a lot of people are unable to watch this live. So this is for you if you're watching on uh, RSS feeds, if you're watching on a on-demand box, if you're watching on Miro Internet TV, YouTube, iTunes, any of the above, uh, this is your chance to also participate. Pop an email to contact at category5.tv. Simply tell me what you would do with Telestream Wirecast if you were to win. Again, that's not going to skew the results whatsoever. However, the winners, uh, basically what the winner says they're going to be doing with it will be uh, quite possibly announced uh, on the air next week. So the draw will be taking place on next week's show. That's April 3rd uh, of 2012, and uh, we would encourage you to watch live. But if you're not here live, we'll also pop you an email. In that email, make sure you give me a name that, uh, that we can announce on the air as well. Contest at Category 5 dot tv contest at category 5 dot tv thank you for pointing out my error jot and we also have a question it's a um, quick estimate from greg in texas about yep. how much it, how it would cost to build a studio just how you've you built yours that's a that's a tough question to, yeah. to add up see because the way that we've done things here at category 5 and and you can do the same is I mean, go back and use that cat5.tv slash archive and then change the last zero in there to zero uh, to, to one, right? So it says zero, zero, one. And you'll see how far we've come. And the way that we've done Category 5 is that we're always very slowly, very gradually, just kind of trickling in little things. And we've been so blessed by, uh, you know, just having viewers who support us, sponsors who, who support us as well. Um, our lighting rig, for example, this is these have been around for a long time. Uh, those were purchased by viewer donations. Um, the computer that you're using was mm -hmm. purchased by viewer donations. A lot of the hardware that we're using on the air, the actual broadcast server, was partially donated by sponsors and partially donated uh, through viewer donations. So um, a lot of it is just kind of it. it we build as we as we go and we grow uh, every year. And uh, we're always doing our best to, to put on a good show for you and to have some fun and to uh, most of all be uh, informative, but also provide you a show that you're going to enjoy. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, don't, I couldn't put a dollar value on it. It's, it's all blood, sweat, and tears and lots of love. A lot of hard work. A lot of hard work. So mm -hmm. that's uh, just about all the time that we have, everybody. Nice to see you. Garby's off to watch episode one. <laughs> Don't do it, folks. Don't do it. Someday I'll show you the webcam that we used for that broadcast. It's amazing. Because this was never meant to happen. This was never meant to grow to where it is. I mean, we, we started this thing as just a, a small project. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are in season five. So, and, uh, It's crazy. Always going strong. Yeah. Yeah. Fifth anniversary coming up on September 25th, I was saying. Yes. Just before the show as well. So. Make sure to be there. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you are in Barry that night. Oh, yes. Where is everybody joining us uh, from in the chat room? Just really quickly, shout out your, uh, yeah, your location. Yeah, definitely. Cheers, drumstick. We've got Emil from Parte. We've got <laughs> guest 6833 is joining us from the UK. We've got Australia's Pyrus Rock. Jot is in the Netherlands. Dudley UK, Dave Maydew. Michigan. Oh, it's flying by faster than I can read it Oof, now, folks. Wow. We've got guest 7788 joining us from Barrie. Nice to see you from our yes. uh, hometown here in Barrie. We've got Toby is joining us from Wales. Just shout them out if you see We got somewhere. UAL from Pittsburgh. And we have DJ Mike from Fort Myers, Florida. We Mr. Have Lulu Apples, we did not miss you from Florida. 
as well. Oh yes, Florida is awesome and warm. <laughs> I wish I was there. <laughs> All I need. Oh, never mind. Um, we have Michelova from wow. Iowa. We have Invincible Mune. I'm in the UK. Nice. And Sitting up at one o'clock in the morning. Phil K joining us from Nashville, <sighs> Ontario. Nice. We have R D Streets from South Carolina. And then we have That's I can't right, Rochester, see. New York. Oh, we have Silicon Valley, uh, which is for a cyber I'm lost smurf now, is folks. from. But uh, you can watch the, uh, you can see the chat logs if you want to see where our viewers are from tonight. And uh, lovely to have everybody here just uh, representing the entire globe tonight. Nice to receive mm -hmm. a postcard as well from uh, right in Afghanistan, sent to us uh, right from Afghanistan. So send in your postcards this week as well, just as a final thought. You can mail them to Category 5 Technology TV, Postal Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario, Canada, L4N7W7. We'd love to receive those. Erica, it's been really nice having you here. Yes. Hope you had fun. I had a lot of fun. You know, for my first show, it was awesome. And I love knowing that everyone from around the world is viewing this, you yeah. know. I teach people from to ski how to, to like all around the world, and it's awesome to, you know, to actually see other people who are interested in technology as I am. Cool. Well, great to have you here and as part of the team. Uh, and do remember to check out Erica's bio. Uh, you can go over to category5.tv and find that this week. So have a good one, and I'll talk to you next Tuesday night. Eric Kidd will be here, and we will be giving away that copy of Wirecast. So we'll talk yes. to you next Tuesday night. See, see you later. Bye-bye.